So when we look at the night sky, look at this, look at this. We look at many different things. Mainly, we look at what is bright, which is the stars, and what is measurable, which is the wavelength and the radiant flux intensity, power, and such and such. Okay. And the reason why we care about this thing is because this is pretty amazing. What is beyond planet Earth? What is beyond our solar system? But in this video, I'm going to summarize everything that we've learned so far. And there's so much more to learn. So this is also to help your brain bring everything together. Okay. So what do we observe? I'm going to draw the good old observer eye again. So dinner pen today. Okay. So what do we see? The first thing we observed was the so bright ah, uh, so bright. Look at all the different bright spots on the back screen. Okay, so I think the first thing we're going to look at, we looked at was the radiant flux intensity. So bright for you. Okay, change my image. So bright. Okay, so the radiant flux intensity, and for this one, we have F is equal to L over 4 pi d squared. Okay, and part of that brightness is also looking at the using at using standard candles. Okay, using standard candles to take a peek at our luminosity yeah. which is the power of the electromagnetic wave this is your luminosity this here. okay so we've also included some examples on how to find the luminosity uh, mainly using standard candles uh, such as a uh, CFIT variable or your supernova type 1a okay so a cv variable or your supernova there we go fixed it okay so from here we can actually uh, seek out the luminosity okay this is how we are tied together and using this relationship we can easily find the distance of your solar system or the thing or the star that you're looking at like for example how bright how far away is this star how about this star how far away is this star how about this one or this one ah so we can measure all right so from cfit variable or any kind of standard candles we can use the value of luminosity and also the measured radiant flux intensity so this one is basically measured on earth Actually, on Earth, or what you observe for your standard candle is actually the period of your flickering. Okay, so observe. Yep. All right. Anyway, let me see. The next one we're going to look at is the um, wavelength. Okay. So we looked at the maximum wavelength, lambda max. Okay of your stars okay so from here we can apply our good old wayne's displacement law okay, so let me write that down it is your wayne's displacement law. and using wayne's displacement we will have the relationship of lambda is inversely proportional to the temperature okay so from lambda is inversely proportional to temperature or aka lambda is equal to b over t i can then join or i guess you know combine with stefan boltzmann law where my L is equal to 4 pi sigma R squared T to the power of 4. And once again, our luminosity is making a guess appearance here. 
This is your end. Okay, and your T is here. So you definitely can find T using Wien's displacement law. All right. After looking at the maximum uh, lambda max of the star, and then this T here, by the way, this T is the surface absolute temperature. We then look at the change in lambda, okay? The shift in lambda here to here, delta lambda. This is your Doppler rate shift. So maybe I shall just wait. No, Doppler rate shift. Feeling fancy, but at the end of the day, it'll be hard to read on the background, not gonna lie. So most of the time, your Doppler equation will, will be rate shifted. And by most, I mean most of the time, but not always, you know. We do know that, right? It's not always. So I'm going to write down the equation for you, okay? This is your Doppler shift equation, delta lambda over lambda is equal to delta F over F is equal to B over C, okay? So from here, we actually can find this value of V, which is your recession velocity. So this V here, recession velocity. Normally it is a star, la, okay, or a solar system or a galaxy. Is it always red shifted? No, it can be blue shifted if let's say you are talking about another star that's close by. But most of the galaxy is red shifted. So what we saw was Doppler red shift for most of the galaxies. I'm gonna swap out the pen with the black. Doppler rate shift for most of the galaxies. Do you know what this implies? This ties us to our good old uh, Hubble's law. So draw a line here. Okay. This one brings us to all the law I use read now. Okay, let me just read some. Hubble's law. Where the value of your V is approximately equal to your Hubble constant times D. Okay, and where did we get our V again? Well, our V is from your Doppler rate shift, your recession velocity. Okay, so from here, we can actually calculate uh, the distance of that galaxy or vice versa. But since from here, V is proportional to D for most galaxies. This leads us to the Big Bang. Is there a big crunch? Mm -hmm. But this is just a theory. We are just guessing. We are still collecting data. All right. So right now, the last part that is linked is the distance. You can see here. I don't know, purple? Okay. So see this value of D here? Ding, 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 ding. It's also link. Because we know the further away the universes are, sorry, the further away the galaxies are, the faster it is running away from us. Yeet! Okay? So at the end of the day, right, when we look at this, it's pretty cool. We look at it, it's so bright. Then, or we could look at it, it is so colorful. So color. For you. So bright, so color. So when we say so bright, we're looking at the wave power. I'm just going to write this here. Basically, we look at the change color, please. Wave power and intensity okay and then down here we look at the wavelength lambda all right 
So based on the wave power, et cetera, et cetera, what we have at the end of the day is uh, different ways for us to ask or find a few things. The first one, let me this first. All right, the first one that we learn to calculate from here is the distance of stars. How far away are our stars? The second one that we can have is the size or specifically the radius of stars. All right. Third one would be the recession velocity or how far away the stars is moving from us. Okay. Velocity of stars. So at the end of the day, right, these are the things that we are looking for. Okay. We're looking for the distance. We're looking for the radius. We're looking for the recession velocity. Okay. And all of it is kind of linked together in this field equation. Maybe you can draw a better mind map than I can, which is great. A mapping is just basically your brain branching out into different realities. Jokes. Branching out into different relationships. Okay. Luminosity to distance of the galax of galaxies, to the temperature, to the size. So that's the stellar radii R here. I cannot change the pen. Okay. So at the end of the day, these are the things that we are measuring. Just going to top up. Radius, thanks for changing color so fast, of the star. And, uh, it's okay, la. it's art. It's the radius of the star. Stellar radian. All right. So that's it for this chapter. This is just a summary for you. And I hope you stay curious and use your big brain to organize stuff. I'll see you when I see you where I see you. Bye-bye.